good morning. Bon matin tout le monde. As we begin, I would like to acknowledge that we're gathered on the unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg people. I also want to thank my friends, Minister Ng, my Parliamentary Secretary, Pam Demoff, MPs Jean Yip, Samir Zuberi, Ali Asasi, and Talib Nur Mohammed for joining us today and for the incredible work that you are all doing in your respective communities. Service to community and country is why we are here today. Protecting Canadians means protecting Canada's institutions. This is the very apex of our responsibility as parliamentarians. It is sacred. Pour assumer cette responsabilité, nous devons faire face à la nature et à l'ampleur des défis auxquels nous sommes confrontés dans notre démocratie. There are few greater challenges that we face than foreign interference. Countering this threat, protecting the safety of Canadians, and maintaining our national sovereignty are my paramount objectives as Minister of Public Safety. As a government, we must keep our eyes wide open from hacking and harassment to stealing sensitive information and infiltrating the economy, foreign hostile actors have targeted Canada. While those threats are not new, they have evolved. And as they have evolved, so too have we stepped up our efforts to protect Canadians. Nous avons pris des mesures concrètes en investissant davantage de ressources dans nos agences chargées de l'application de la loi et de la sécurité nationale. Nous leur avons donné de nouveaux pouvoirs, y compris des pouvoirs flexibles en matière de mesures de réduction des menaces. Nous avons pris des mesures énergiques contre le financement étranger visant à interférer avec nos élections. Nous avons renforcé les règles relatives au partenariat étranger dans le secteur universitaire. Nous avons présenté le projet de loi C-26 pour renforcer l'infrastructure cybercriminelle du Canada. En fait, en ce qui concerne nos élections, nous avons chargé nos plus hauts fonctionnaires non-partisans d'aider à préserver l'intégrité des résultats dans les urnes afin que ce soit les Canadiens et eux seuls qui choisissent leur gouvernement. We've also enhanced transparency by creating the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians and the National Security Intelligence Review Agency. And earlier this week, the Prime Minister announced that the NCCOP and NCIRA will review foreign interference in elections with an independent special rapporteur working closely with them. The rapporteur will then make public recommendations, which could include a formal inquiry or some other independent process. The Government of Canada will respect those recommendations. But there remains much more work to be done. We are at a critical juncture when it comes to the security of our democratic institutions. And now, we're taking another step in protecting them. Today, I'm announcing the launch of consultations to guide how we will set up a new foreign influence transparency registry in Canada. Consultations will involve direct engagements with communities, stakeholders, and the general public, and these consultations will inform the path forward. A virtual portal has also been set up on our Public Safety Canada website where individuals will be able to submit their ideas. This process will begin now and conclude on May 9th. At its core, the purpose of our consultation will seek to do three things. Foster transparency regarding legitimate foreign state lobbying and activities. Modernize existing legislative authorities to address and mitigate 
foreign state activities that go beyond legitimate diplomacy in an attempt to clandestinely or deceptively manipulate Canada's open democracy, economy, and society. And finally, to broadly engage all Canadians in a conversation about how to protect our institutions from foreign interference in an inclusive manner that respects the diversity of our population and, of course, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. I hope that all Canadians will take part in this exercise. And I, along with my colleagues, look forward to engaging through roundtable discussions in the coming weeks. Alors que nous nous engageons dans ce processus, il est impératif que nous nous souvenions des personnes et des communautés qui sont les plus touchées par l'ingérence étrangère. Les plus touchées, les plus touchées, il est essentiel que cet outil soit conçu avec leur participation à chaque étape du processus. That is why we need to be sure that we will get this right. As I conclude my remarks today, I want to emphasize that our government is treating this question with the seriousness that it deserves. As my colleague, Minister Dominic LeBlanc, said earlier this week, this is not a partisan issue, this is a Canadian issue. And today's announcement is one more way in which we will ensure to keep it that way. Thank you, merci, and I will now turn it over to my friend and colleague, Minister Mary Ng. Bonjour tout le monde, and uh, thank you, Marco, for your hard work and your commitment in defending Canada's democracy. I also want to thank my colleague members of Parliament who are here with us uh, today, in Jean, Pam, Ali, Talib, and Samir. Thank you so much for being here. Let me take a moment to speak to Canadians. As you heard Minister Mendicino say, it is critical essential that Canada's democracy is impartial, independent, and strong. Since 2015, day one of our government, we have focused on strengthening and protecting our democratic institutions. What we're witnessing today is an assault on the institutions that Canadians have worked so hard to build. Foreign interference is something that our government treats with the highest levels of priority and the seriousness that it deserves. But what Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives are doing is exactly what foreign actors want. They are dividing us. They are playing to our base fears and they're sowing mistrust by repeatedly ignoring the feedback from our most senior national security public servants who have struggled to have their voices heard among the partisan political attack on our institutions. And while they are focused on creating this divide amongst Canadians, we are taking action to protect our citizens and our democracy which is why the work Minister Menachino is announcing today is so important. We will take the time necessary to talk to Canadians to understand their concerns and their feedback on how to best implement a registry of foreign actors. I also want to reiterate what the Prime Minister said in his remarks on Monday. Nous devons prendre en considération notre histoire chaque fois qu'il est question d'un registre OPE. We have to be mindful of history anytime we're talking about registries of foreigners in our country. We have a great responsibility to ensure that we are not unfairly or unintentionally creating a cloud that hovers over an entire community that is feeling incredibly uncertain and who have felt the discomfort of unconscious bias that became very conscious in the early days of the pandemic. Right now, I want to take another moment to speak to Chinese Canadians. As a Chinese Canadian member of parliament in cabinet who represents a community with thousands of Chinese Canadians, I have heard your voices of worry and of unease. We saw the despicable rise of anti-Asian racism throughout the pandemic, and we are now feeling great uncertainty about the impact of these partisan attacks that sow fear and anger. Like every other Canadian, our community cares deeply about Canada, 
about democracy, we volunteer, we vote, and we make our voices heard. But the feeling we can't shake are the suspicious eyes that now cast question on why we are involved, as if we are easily controlled or influenced by hostile actors from afar. And this is just not acceptable. With almost 2 million Chinese Canadians from coast to coast to coast, leaders from all political parties need to take a step back and to step up to ensure that we're not alienating millions of Canadians, an entire generation, from the political process. We have fought too hard for representation, and we're not going to go backwards. That's why I'm here today. It's why I'm pleased to be here with Minister Manichino and our colleagues to launch this very important conversation with Canadians, and that's why we will fight every single day to protect the strength, the integrity, the resilience of Canada's world-class democratic institutions. Merci. Thank you. There's currently a bill in the Senate to do exactly what you're trying to do, create a registry for foreign agents. And there's also one that never made it off the order paper in the House of Commons. I'm wondering if you can tell us how different this will be and how much the threat level has changed that now this is a priority for your government. Well, thank you for the question. And there's no doubt that the threat involving foreign interference has evolved over the last number of years, including since we took the reins of government in 2015 which is why we have put in place a number of concrete measures, including giving our national security agencies the resources, the new authorities that they need to address and mitigate foreign interference, which is why we've also put into place a number of mechanisms that are specifically designed to protect our democratic institutions, including our elections in a transparent manner. That includes the creation of the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, a forum in which par parliamentarians can and have worked in collaboration to produce recommendations, some of which we are now um, acting on, including the creation of the National Security Intelligence Review Agency, um, the two independent panels that have reviewed and verified that the federal elections in 2019 and 2021 were free and fair, but with recommendations, which uh, my colleague and I, Minister LeBlanc, will uh, continue to work with the Public Service to implement. And with regards to your specific question about um, the bill that has uh, come from Senator Housakis, I've sat down with him. I've sat down with uh, many other parliamentarians. I've sat down uh, with, with folks from every corner of the chamber. The purpose of this exercise is to have a consultation that not only engages the people that work in this chamber, but Canadians right across from every community. I think my colleague, Minister Ng, made it very clear that it's important that we bring all Canadians along, including members of the Chinese Canadian community, who have reason to be concerned, given the history of the way in which these powers can be abused, to assure them that whatever authority that we put forward will be done in a manner that respects their rights to fully participate in our politics consistent with the Charter. And we're looking very much forward to uh, in having those conversations with them so that we can get this right. And Mary, be but happy to have you. Why are you only doing this now? The U.S. already has the registry like this. Australia only has a registry. Why only take this step now when our allies have already done this? First, I want to be clear that we have been vigilant and proactive since we took the reins of government. No government has put in place more authorities and resources to tackle foreign interference than ours. Um, Except we for this are, registry which the US and Australia already has and we are only starting consultations right now. We have laid the foundation for a, a conversation that will be sure that we get this mechanism right. It is not an uncomplicated, straightforward exercise. We need to be sure that we carefully craft the threshold. We need to be sure that we understand the parameters of the program. And we also have to be upfront and inclusive with Canadians. And I'm going to turn yeah. it over to Minister Ng to speak to that point. I think it's very important. I want to speak to all Canadians uh, on this point. I think that the opportunity to listen to Canadians, and I would encourage everyone to participate and to participate widely. It is precisely how we are going to design this registry with their voices in mind, understanding, um, understanding uh, the history 
that, uh, that we've had in this country. And ensuring that we listen to Canadians, uh, Chinese Canadians, all Canadians is extremely important as we do this work. Nous préciser pourquoi seulement des consultations. Depuis le début de la semaine, on, on ne vous sent pas en mode urgence. Vous avez parlé de, 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 de consultations, vous en avez parlé dès lundi. Pourquoi seulement des consultations ce matin? Comme j'avais déjà mentionné, l'enjeu de l'ingérence étrangère est un enjeu que nous prenons très au sérieux. Ça, c'est la raison que ce gouvernement a déjà mis en place des mesures concrètes, par exemple, des nouvelles autorités pour soutenir nos agences qui travaillent dans l'espace de sécurité nationale, mettre avec la transparence euh, pour mettre la lumière euh, pour la, dans la manière qu'on livrait ce service, avec la création d'un comité de parlementaires qui touchait sur les enjeux de, de renseignement et sécurité nationale, avec la création d'un bureau de l'OSSN ou INSERA, et avec l'éminent euh, nomination d'un rapporteur spécial qui vont travailler ensemble avec tous euh, les, les, les deux pour offrir une recommandation pour les prochaines étapes, comment on peut, on peut avancer l'importance, euh, le travail dans la lutte pour, contre l'ingérence étrangère. Il y a l'Australie, il y a les États-Unis. Les États-Unis, ça fait presque un siècle qu'ils ont ce genre de, 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 de registre-là. Pourquoi, pourquoi ne pas d'abord aller de l'avant, puis ensuite peut-être modifier, mais pourquoi, pourquoi encore consulter? Les Canadiens sont en train de perdre confiance dans leur démocratie. Parce qu'il faut euh, aller dans le, le bonne direction sur cet outil. Ce n'est pas facile. Il y a des complexités. Il y a des dynamiques dans le comité. Il faut ramener tous les Canadiens dans une consultation qui est vraiment euh, inclusive. Mais dans l'intérim, le gouvernement a déjà pris beaucoup d'actions, de, euh, des mesures concrètes pour la lutte contre l'ingérence euh, étrangère et on va suivre avec uh, cette importante Specifically, are you referring to when you talk about history? What are you fearful that we're going to replicate that we've done in the past? Well, there are generations of uh, Canadians now in British Columbia who are Japanese Canadians who've had an experience of uh, being excluded. Uh, we have had an exclusion act in this country. Uh, we have uh, had other. Uh, we have other, other mechanisms where um, um, my colleagues. Um, uh, shared that uh, that after 9/11, uh, uh, and, and, and a, a aspersion that has been cast. What I want to say is that uh, Chinese Canadians care deeply about Canada's democracy, and um, and they expect that their vote will count, and that there isn't a shadow on that on their exercise of democracy. I think putting together this registry and doing the work, doing the work of listening to Canadians, so that we get it right is what Minister Mendicino has announced today, and that is the work that I'm committed to doing uh, with my ministerial colleague, and indeed that's the, that's the work our government is committed to doing. When are you going to have this up and running, if consultations are till May? Um, as I said, uh, the process starts today. Um, we have a web portal that has been set up where Canadians will be able to uh, start to submit their ideas. I'm looking forward to doing this work with my colleague, uh, Minister Eng, and others where we'll be setting up uh, roundtables, uh, meeting with community members, meeting with stakeholders in this space uh, to make sure that we uh, hear their advice and their perspectives and then to weave that into um, the, the, the creation of this new uh, important uh, mechanism. And it is important, it is, it is urgent, but as you've heard Minister Ng say, um, we need to be sure uh, that we are inclusive, uh, that we have regard to the sensitivities around the historical context in which in the past um, this is this has gone uh, this has not gone in the right way and we need to make sure that we get it right. Well, Can you make the before the, the next election? Before the next election? So as you've heard we are going to set up the process starting today. Um, we hope to uh, to have a formal uh, conclusion to the process in the, in the in the very near future approximately two months but the conversation around how we fight foreign interference has one that has been going on since we took the reins of but government in 2015. Well, okay. right and, and, and I want to be clear that even as we proceed with this conversation around this particular uh, instrument, 
uh, that we are continuing to put in place the resources, when? continuing to take the necessary action through law enforcement agencies. You've heard the RCMP take some very right. decisive yeah, action. And je vais tourner dans un moment. Uh, we have already started the process today by setting up a website where Canadians will be able to submit their ideas and we will be starting next week with a series of engagements across the country. la prochaine élection et qui voulait entendre à part les Canadiens? Nous sommes très anxieux de commencer ce processus de consultation avec enfin un projet de loi. Mais il faut suivre avec une un consultation qui est vraiment inclusive. But you can't say when this is going to be up and running. When will a registry be up and running? As soon as we can have this consultation, continue the debate with our parliamentarians, put forward a bill that is respectful of the various perspectives and advice that we receive from Canadians, and that is uh, something that we take very urgently. But the but point I have... By this year? By next year, before the next election? Well, I appreciate now that you've pressed on it, uh, and I understand that this is urgent, but I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to underscore is that even as we are having this conversation, the government has been vigilant. We have been proactive. We have been tackling a, a, a wide array of issues. You know, you've heard the RCMP say that they have uh, shut down those so-called police stations. Any effort by any foreign power that is hostile to try and undermine our institutions, our economy, the full participation of Canadians, regardless of back, uh, background in our politics, is unacceptable. And at each and every juncture, we have taken the steps to both address and mitigate those concerns as it relates to foreign interference. This process is running parallel to all of the other work that we have done since 2015, through the creation of new authorities, through the creation of vehicles that raise the bar of transparency, following the recommendations of NCCOP, creating a coordinator within my ministry uh, to bring all of the resources into focus to do this work, uh, making sure that we appoint a special rapporteur to further uh, map out the next steps in which we can do this work. There has been a ton of work done in this government and at times with the cooperation of the opposition, and that is precisely the unifying call that we are channeling in this conversation. And you this morning also be up and running for the next election. Realistically, how much of a difference is this registry going to make? Will this prevent the Chinese government-run police stations that the RCMP is investigating in Quebec right now? I think that's a very fair question, and it is important, uh, I think, to underline that while this is a tool that we hope to set up, it is just that. It is one tool. It is not a panacea. It will not stop every potential effort by a hostile state actor to interfere. But when you take this tool and you combine it and stack it with all of the other measures that we have put into place, the resources that we have put into place, the, the, the agencies and the bodies that have raised the bar of transparency so we can shine a light on how we do this work, but also bringing along all Canadians as Minister Ng, I think, has very eloquently put, um, Canadians can be re reassured in our government that we take this issue seriously, in our institutions, our economy, our elections, and that is why, again, this, this next phase and step is so critically important. Today, China said that Canada should stop sensationalizing them and they said that they should stop attacks and smears on China. One, do you have any new information on these police stations you can provide? And two, what do you say to China, who's now accusing Canada of smearing their reputation and attacking them? Well, with regards to the last part of your question, I thought my colleague, uh, Minister Jolie, spoke very forcefully yesterday in front of the committee uh, that she and our government uh, will never hesitate to stare down any hostile uh, foreign power or state actor, as she has done in the past and as she will continue to going forward. It is regrettable uh, that um, a particular a Conservative member of Parliament uh, had attempted to undermine the legitimacy of her efforts with a misogynistic uh, smear that is absolutely unacceptable. He should apologize. It is unfortunately part of a consistent pattern by Pierre Poilev to continue to bend over backwards to make this a partisan issue. Fighting against foreign interference is not a partisan issue. It is a Canadian issue. 
and all parliamentarians and all Canadians need to come together to make sure that we do the work in a way that has integrity and that we, we can be sure that our institutions are protected from this threat. Monsieur Mendicino, est-ce qu'à la fin des consultations, vous pourriez décider de ne pas aller de l'avant avec un registre? Pardon? Est-ce qu'à la fin des consultations, vous pourriez décider de ne pas aller de l'avant avec un registre? Le but de cette consultation est de, un, à promouvoir la transparence de les activités légitimes. Deuxièmement, de uh, décourager avec des nouveaux outils uh, législatifs uh, pour assurer qu'on a les protections que nous avons besoin uh, pour la lutte contre l'ingérence uh, étrangère. Et finalement, pour uh, engager tous les Canadiens dans toutes les communautés dans une manière inclusive. Donc, on peut aller dans la bonne direction. Ça, c'est le but de cette conversa uh, conversation que nous sommes en train de commencer aujourd'hui. Et, et ça, c'est en plus de toutes les, les mesures concrètes qu'on avait que déjà mises en place. Il y aura place. un registre, oui ou so non? Donc, vous pensez que cela sera en train de pour la prochaine élection? As I have said now on a number of occasions, we're looking forward to having a consultation. It starts today. Um, there's, a, I think, a very focused timeline. And then so from there, it. and then from there, we hope to, to be able to have next steps. Thank you very much. Merci. 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 And so we should see this in the fall. Uh, well, yeah. Don't know. We're going to have a register at the end of the